Hey everyone, we're talking about uh, the brakes on my Forerunner here today. Uh, I'm going to be showing you just an overview of what I did, what parts I used for the upgrade. Um, but the main pr point of this video is to show you my uh, load spring or load sensing proportioning valve delete and how I did that. Um, anyway, let's just start with uh, with what parts I got here. Um, drilled and slotted rotors are from LC Engineering, and uh, they're pretty neat. It's a genuine Toyota rotor, and uh, they drill and slot them themselves on their machines. Um, the calipers here are from Trail Gear. They're the V6 ro or V6 calipers, and uh, then I just got some pads from Advanced Auto Parts. Also, when you get the V6 calipers, uh, you'll have to cut the uh, this backing plate. You can see right there uh, the the four cylinder rotor or calipers aren't quite as large, and you have to cut it down here as well. But it's no big deal. I just took an angle grinder and chop chop and you know just test fitted it, made sure it fit, and then I was done. Um, stainless steel brake lines here. I uh, didn't really like how close they came to the sway bar and, and stuff, so I put this 5 16 fuel line, I just split it lengthwise, wrapped it around there and zip tied it, and that just uh, gives it more abrasion resistance. Um, you can see my ball joint spacers there. Uh, eBay ones, and I got some, grade, uh, some high grade hardware from boltdepot.com. Um, Moog ball joints, don't buy them. Uh, I already had one of them go bad after less than a thousand, about a thousand miles, maybe 1,200 miles. Um, and all of them, these these boots, they all don't hold grease. That one's messed up. You can see they just leak grease all over the place. Here's my tie rod ends. Just messy. And they're, I mean, they're cheap. They have grease fittings, which is nice. Um, but I don't know. I think I, I'm probably going to go with Toyota ones next time. Under the hood over here, I went to Advanced Auto Parts and I got the, uh, the master cylinder from a 1990 Toyota 4 Runner. It is a remanufactured unit, but it is actually OEM Toyota originally. It's uh, It's got the ASIN stamp on it. I can't really get it on camera. There's stuff in the way. Um, it didn't come with the reservoir, so I had to go to a junkyard and get, get a reservoir off of the V6 4 Runner, second gen. I had a dual diaphragm brake booster as well from a um, second gen 4 Runner V6. But it, w it didn't work at all. I put it on there and then uh, I had no brakes at all. I was, well, you know, no power brakes anyway. So I got the stock single diaphragm there. Um, so I'm still going to pick one of those up. Uh, let's see. For the brake lines, I was able to bend them to fit so it still looks pretty much stock there. And for the wiring, you can see I have a factory plug there. And that wire runs down to another factory plug. So in inside this... Uh, this electrical tape here is where I soldered two pieces together. So it uses factory plugs. I didn't have to flare any lines. I just uh, had to bend this because the stock one, this comes into the top, but obviously it needs to go into the side, so I just bent it over. Um, I loosened this this uh, line bolt right here, rotated it over, got it to line up, and then tighten it back down. And of course I am telling you about how I did my proportioning valve delete, so you have to put in a manual proportioning valve. So here's the one I got, I got it from LC Engineering. Uh, you have to buy these uh, swag locks, I think they're called, swage locks, swag lock, I'm not sure. Um, but you don't have to flare anything, you just cut the line, you stick them in there and you tighten them down, and they self, they flare the line themselves in there, and uh, I've had no leaks at all. I used red Loctite for the threads from the swag lock to the body, and then nothing, you just do it dry for the line to the swag lock. And I made a custom bracket there to hold it to the firewall. There was already a hole there, so I just made the bracket that bolts into that hole. And uh, got a couple bolts there to hold the proportion valve to my bracket. Now here's the real nifty part. Uh, I went to a junkyard and I got two of these brackets. Now stock, let's see if I can get this to stay out of the way. Stock, there's an L, there's an L fitting and there's a T right here. But you need two L's because what happens is there's one that goes to the front from the ma from the master cylinder, and there's one that goes to the that goes to the rear. And then from the proportioning valve, there's one that comes back and feeds into the front brakes. Because what it does is it feeds extra pressure from the rear to the front. That's how the proportioning valve works. But obviously you're not going to have that there, so you're not going to need the T fitting there. So you you can either block it off, or you can get another L fitting, cut it cut off the T fitting and weld the L fitting there, which is what I did. And then you end up with a real factory looking connection here. It's two L fittings. No mess, no extra brake lines hanging around. Well, there was, but I took it out. You know, just cut it and then uh, get it out of the way. 
So that looks all factory there. And then if you head to the rear, you can see there's a there's the line that I cut. That's the return line that comes from the, the stock LSPV to the T junction that is now gone and turned into an L. Um, and then I got another one of those L junctions and uh, put it where the uh, this line comes from the master cylinder, and then it would go into the LSPV, but now it goes into this L. And this comes normally from the LSPV, but now it just comes from this L bracket thing here, L fitting. And then it goes to the rear brakes. And you can see I have another stainless steel braided line here. And that just goes to the rear brake. Now I didn't replace the drums, but I did replace the wheel cylinders. And I got wheel cylinders from Advance Auto Parts that fit a 1990 Toyota Land Cruiser. And those bolt right in, but they're a larger diameter, so you get better brakes in the rear. The only thing I haven't done is secure this because it, it's kind of wobbly. I don't know over time if I would fatigue the lines, so I'm just going to make a little bracket and have that secured so it doesn't wobble. So for the LSPV Delete, what do you need exactly? Um, well, you need to get two of these brackets so that you can cut the, uh, the L-fittings off. And then... Uh, and then you'll have an extra, then you have your original one, because you take the two, you make them into L-fitting ones, and then you have your original one still, and you'll use that L-fitting for the back to go where the LSPV was. Um, then you'll have a line, that is the pressure return line from the LSPV to the front brakes. That'll be open at either end, so you can leave it there hanging. I did that for about a week, and then I finally got around to taking it out, and then you'll have no lines. Um, I only have a bit above the tank because I couldn't really get to it, so I figured if I ever have the tank out, I'll get that extra piece of line out. But there's just an open fuel line on both ends on uh, above the tank. So now when you take this off, you don't have the uh, you don't have messed up lines going all over the place. You don't have things that look on factory. You know, I wanted this to look real clean, so that's why I did it this way. I made the special bracket with two L fittings uh, in the back. That's the only thing that looks kind of hokey, but you know. Um, it should clean up okay once I make the bracket and get that extra piece of line out. And under the hood, it's pretty much all Toyota hardware. Uh, I didn't have to cut or flare any lines or any. Well, I had to cut that for the proportion valve, but I didn't have to cut or reflare any lines up here for the master cylinder. Everything still routes the same way. Um, and then I got that custom proportion valve in there and uh, made that bracket for it, so it, it bolts in there real nice and looks, you know, looks clean. It doesn't look factory, but it looks clean.